Hello everybody, today I am talking about Lamborghini Gallardos and Audi R8s. If you've been watching the channel, you'll probably know that I have recently bought myself a lovely early 5 litre Lamborghini Gallardo. And most people would probably tell you that that's simply an overpriced, less reliable R8. But having now done some digging, I found out that's not the case at all. But I wouldn't expect you to take my word for it. Instead, I've popped down here to RE Performance, where as you can see, we're not short of examples of both. And I'm speaking to Ricky, the man behind RE Performance, who's going to talk us through some of the key differences between these two cars. Now this is a two-part series, and in today's first installment, we're going to be looking at engines, specifically some of the key differences between the five liter Lamborghini engine and the 5.2 liter Audi V10, as seen in the later LP Gardo and the R8. So let's go speak to the man. Uh, hello, welcome to my engine room. Uh, I know we were going to have a chat about uh, 5 litres and 5.2s, so we'll run through some bits. Uh, we'll start off rods and pistons in front of me, so we'll start off with those. Um, and then I've got a block, and then we've done some math, so we'll, we'll go through that. Um, so I know you've just bought your 5 litre. So that is a standard 5 litre piston. That is a standard five litre rod, and that's a standard five litre pin. Um, so you'll notice a uh, flat top piston as opposed to the 5.2. Um, same pin diameter, 20 mil pins, but you'll see the wall thickness is completely different. So the early five litres had quite a thin wall thickness. Um, and that's one of the things we change, uh, like the pistons supplied for say the big blue rebuild we've just done or, or say a turbo conversion is we always normally step the pins up and we can offset that because the aftermarket pistons are a lot lighter so we get some thickness back we get some strength back um, but we don't add a load of weight um, they're not bad pistons in either case standard the only reason we change them when we do a rebuild on a five liter is they're a thousand pound each so, as opposed to them being 250 quid. So all of a sudden, for a set of pistons and a 5.0 from Lamborghini, you're spending 10 grand. Now, we don't have numbers matching engine builds over here. People aren't really too fussed. If their Lamborghini's gone to the wall, they're more worried about what the bill's gonna be rather than have I got standard pistons inside. So, we would normally change those for a CP uh, with similar ring packs but we do some differences then depending on whether we've got a sleeve block or a standard um, alley seal ball. So again, you can get all geeky on that kind of thing. We try not to bring the skirt width down. On a race piston we would, we'd bring the skirt width right down to get the drag down. But on majority of what people want is a road engine. So we want that support on the cylinder wall. So that's a five litre piston. And you can see they're not too different. The only thing you probably notice on the bo bottom of the five litre is that little notch, which is for the squirter jet. Um, the other big difference is flat top, and this has obviously got a dish. Now the main reason for this is, one, to bring the compression ratio up, um, because you can't encroach on your squish, which is the edge of where the edge of the piston meets the top of the head. You get that, I'll show you on the head in a minute, you get that sort of, it's not a perfect circle on the underside of the head, you get the quench or the squish area. So they bring some CC back into the engine with the dome, uh, with the, the positive dome. With a negative dome, it's then the DI. So that's port injection, it's a direct injection. So the injector's in the combustion chamber uh, and you need that to help generate swirl of the mixture as it's injected. So that's why they look completely different. Um, again, pins we've spoken about, and then rods. So. Differences in rod bolts, you can't cross them over. Not really any sort of plus or minus. Um, it's just as technology's moved on, they're like 20 years old now, when you think when these engines first came out. So you've just kind of got a different way of doing the same job. Not really too much of a bother. If we were using stock rods, we'd just replace with stock bolts. If we were going to aftermarket rods, we would use upgraded 
ARP bolts or Carrillo bolts. We don't really do stud conversions um, because a stud will pull the rod differently and then you've got to remachine your rod, so we don't really do that. The biggest difference, biggest two differences, is one, these are cracked and these are pinned. So how the rod is made is completely different. So they make that in one piece and for want of a better word, jam half it in a vice and smash the other half off. So you get that cracked effect on the end. Um, that means then when you join it back together, it goes back together perfect. It also helps if you throw everything in a parts washer, <laughs> they only go back together one way. So we mark everything anyway, but a rod and a cap will only fit together with their own mate and halves. With these, you've got to be a little bit more careful because you can muddle them up. So everything's marked as we take it apart if we're reusing it. But essentially, your location is done on your dowel. Um, you've got to be careful how you take them apart and put them together because you can, they should be tight. But you can, if people have been rocking them in and out to put them together, you can get wear in the pins, in the pin bores, and then the rod doesn't sit right. So you just need to keep your eye on that sort of thing. The other thing is these are even on the journal face on both sides. And this is because they share a common crank pin. Uh, quite like, all right, this is out of a McLaren, but that is a common big end. A five litre has got an offset crank and it's offset by 17 degrees. So, on one side, it has a smaller journal face than the other, and that's because essentially two rods sit and do that for every rotation. So you need a bigger bearing surface between the two rods to make sure that you don't get um, you don't get excessive wet. Uh, trapezoidal end, so a tapered end, and the piston suits that. So you will not get a parallel rod. Well, you can see, I can't get it in the hole. Um, so that's again, something you have to be careful either in your piston design or your rod design when you're aftermarket. But that's the main differences between the uh, reciprocating parts in a five litre and a 5.2. Um, they're called, people call mod fire, people call leave even fire. The reason a Gallardo five litre sounds different is because of the offset crank pin, 17 degrees, 18 degrees, they fire evenly every 70 degrees. So 70 degrees of crank rotation, you get a firing stroke, next 70 degrees you get a firing stroke. In the 5.2s, it's 90 degrees and then 54. So they fire across the banks, but it's not even. Can make tuning them on standalone like we do on our twin turbos a nightmare. Um, but that's why ultimately they sound different. Uh, why they went that way, I don't know the official reasons. Uh, common pin crank is stronger, it's ultimately stronger. You've got five less stress points in the crank um, because of course every time there's a join or transition like a camshaft, uh, you put a stress point into it. So that is not one. I thought I had a split pin crank in here. Um, but. That's ultimately the reason. The engine generation moved along now to the right. It's easier to have a common pin and change the way the engine fires than to forge an offset pin crank. So you'll see we went S6, S8, RS6, five litre, all split cranks. Everything pretty much since then is common crank. Um, and that's just how the development has gone on then. That means you've got a stronger crank. Um, you've got, it's easier to obviously make the crank. Um, the compression ratio is mainly for DI. That's why they raised the compression ratio. Um, but as you can see, you have got the S6, S8 has got the same bore and stroke as the LP560, the first gen R8 and Huracan. The RS6, which everyone says, oh, it's a Lambo engine, an RS6. It isn't. The only thing it shares is it's got an offset crank. That is it. It's different CC. It's different compression ratio. It's different firing order. It just shares the same idea crank. Um, 
So I think a lot of it is urban legend on what, on what people sort of think is Lambo engine. I've got Gardos out there. They've got Audi castings on them. But we were discussing this off camera. You know, it's like the old days when Hondas used to have, Rovers used to have Honda engines in. So I think it's, I think it's when the relationship started and when it became an Audi Lamborghini engine. For me, LP560. That was the first one to have an R8 engine in or the R8 had the Lamborghini engine in, whichever way you want to look at it. For me, it's an R8 engine in a Lamborghini, in an LP, because it was made in Neckasalem, which is an Audi factory. So that's how I see it. The five litre, that sits on its own. Nothing else has it. Nothing else uses it. That is just in five litre Gallardo. Yes, they look similar. If you showed them to nine, 100 people, 99 people wouldn't know the difference between them. The biggest difference on a five litre block is in the V. The naked eye won't show you cylinder space in. If you look at the timing end, you won't see it. But if you want to look at a block and know it's a five litre Gallardo, that's oil feed and that's oil filter housing top. And that's the, the main thing that tells you it is a five litre block. Um, like I said, there's other, there's other bits and pieces, how the fixtures attach, how the alternator attaches, how the compressor attaches. There's slight differences in the timing end. Um, the cylinder bore spacing is different. That's completely different. Um, so it's 88 mil as opposed to 90 mil on everything else, everything Audi. Um, but these are renowned for being delicate, but I'd say that's an unfair shout. We don't see many that fail. We see majority of them have issues because the cats fail. So I tell everybody all the same, get the bloody stock cats off it and put uh, Larini, Larini sports cats. They're the only ones that do um, good quality cats for them that we've got experience with, not saying there aren't others, but they've got HJS cores in them. So it's a motorsport core. Um, if you've got a five litre Gallardo or five litre Superleggera, take the cats out, throw them away. You'll save yourself thousands. If you see a five litre Gallardo smoking, it's because it sucked the cats back in. Um, that was one of them. The yellow one out the back is the same. We've discussed that one already. Um, I would hazard a guess that it's probably the original reason why yours needed a rebuild. The blue 110,000 mile car that we built for Simon, that at its cats. Um, and it was just the materials available in the day. They're aggressive on overfuel. So Gallardo's pop and spit flames on overrun. So all that heat and explosion hits the front of the cat, which just beats the living hell out of it. And the cat just turns to a dust. And then of course, then you shut the throttle and you get negative pressure inside the engine it just drags everything out of the exhaust and sucks it back in the engine and it no different to just you throwing a handful of gravel in the intake that's essentially what happens it's not a particularly bad one to be fair but you start getting that so this is out of an engine that's had crap go through the top of it and you can even see you can even feel it on the top where it's mottled the top of the piston out and then all it does is it gets dragged down the side, sits on the rings, and it just gets driven into, into the bores. Uh, not too bad, to be fair. There's some particle scores in it. I don't know whether a camera will pick it up. but Yeah, so in that respect, throw the stock cats away, which kind of then moves you on to um, the next tuning phase, making the exhaust more efficient, is the first thing you should do. So they're pretty open silencers anyway, um, especially if you've got a super Leggera. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Putting a good cat on them will free up horsepower. Putting the official Lamborghini performance air filters on them will help free up horsepower. So you either had a paper filter um, or Lamborghini done an official k and upgrade, 50 quid a filter. Um, so not much dearer than a standard filter. So those are the first two things I would do. Um, a remap doesn't yield massive gains, not in our experience. It will help tidy a few things up, but it's not like the Gen 1. So the Gen 1 R8 came out, it was 525 horsepower. 
and the LP560 came out, and it was obviously 560. And the reason the R8 was pegged back was to stop the car 60 grand cheaper than the, Gall than the Gallardo being an equal. So we can take a Gen 1 R8 V10, remap it, and get 580 horsepower. You don't get the same. You don't get the same gains. So I wouldn't say to anyone who came through the door, oh, we've got to remap your car. Not the same like we would in a V10, in an R8 Gen 1 V10. I would say spend your money on some cats, spend your money on some air filters, and make sure the inlet manifold solenoids in the back work. So another thing that is different to these, to the 5.2s, is they've got a switch path inlet manifold. So they've got short track and long track. Short track is, equal, is the same bank. So it goes from bank one and it feeds bank one on short, on short track. When the inlet manifold switches over, bank one plenum feeds bank two engine. And what happens is they rest closed. So they rest in long track, which is great for torque, low down, but you lose the top end. Um, and we see loads come in where either the solenoids are torn uh, sorry, the vacuum actuators are torn and they leak, or the uh, solenoids, the electronic solenoids that control those actuators fail. So your manifold's stuck in long track. So when you go out on the open road and you drive through it, it feels great low end, and then it just starts to feel breathless right at the top. So that's one thing I'd probably say you need to check. You can gain some horsepower. You can recover some horsepower back there. Um, other than that, regular oil changes, good oil, um, regular spark plugs. If you've got a coupe, the front lid leaks water, as in doesn't leak, lets water into the engine bay where the rear window meets the lid. That water lands on rock covers and that water then can run down into the spark plug tubes for one and six and it can pop the coils or the fuse for the coils, it can blow the coils up. So originally there was a rework, and maybe if we go in the workshop in a minute, I'll show you. Uh, but there was a coil cover that screwed on with two screws and it covers the coils and a cam sensor. And there was a rework to put a seal under that to basically glue it to the rocker cover to stop that happening. Um, so that can cause issues. Uh, if you've just bought one and you are putting plugs in it, put a set of coils in it from Lamborghini Genuine, they're like 250 quid for a set of 10. They're cheaper than what the R8 ones are. They're like 50 quid each. So put a set of coils in it, that help you. Um, change fuel filters. And just try and get it back to where it should be. Um, the, early, the early ones had campies, your campy throttle bodies. Yours has probably got campy throttle bodies. And they're big, wide, square things, like what used to go on a Maseratis and a Ferraris. Um, there's not a lot you can do to protect them, but they're known to fail. Um, you get sporadic throttle faults, idle control is a bit blah, you just start it and it goes rah, 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 rah. Um, uh, or you just lose a, lose a throttle body altogether. Like I said, nothing you can do about it, it's just one of those things. If you see them on eBay, they're coming up cheap and they're tested and good, buy them because they're rare as rocking horse. If you buy them from Lambo, remortgage your house because they're like 1800 quid each. Uh, they're expensive because they're canvas controlled. So they don't have a motor drive wire to them. Like say a Bosch does. I've got a Bosch line around here. So six pin throttle body. That has got two wires to control a motor, negative and positive, drive it in either direction. Two wires or, and then two sensors. So a, um, a, a main and a track in, so a fail safe. If you've got a later 08 Gallardo, you'll probably have Bosch's on. Now, to make that work with the CAMP ECUs, they put an electronic throttle body control module in the left haunch, and it's called the ETB module. So if you've got Bosch's on a five litre Gallardo, you will have an ETB module, uh, and they can be a pain as well. So. Depending on which one you've got, you're either probably gonna have throttle body issues or you're gonna have ETB control module issues. And I think it's just heat, age, and they're always working. As long as the car's running, they're working. Um, so just one of those things. Uh, diagnostic machines are hard. So if you're looking for an independent or someone to look after it, ask them what diagnostics they use. 
Uh, Lada and Lara is the official system. Not much talks to these early Gallardos, like old 355s and 360s, not much talk to them. So whoever you're looking for to work on the car, ask them, can they talk to it? Because even simple things like doing a clutch reset is a pain in, a pain if you haven't got the right kit. Uh, adapting throttle bodies is a pain. Talking to the control modules to uh, do any adaptions or to look after live data. You can't just go and buy a VCDS cable for 250 quid and download a free bit of software and do everything like you can on a LP and a Hurricane and the R8, um, which is a Vagcom cable. So the early ones are a little bit finicky, a little bit awkward. But that's the same with uh, Diablos, Merchilagos and Aventadors as well. They, they're kind of, they're, they're just a difficult to talk to and you need the right kit. So if you're looking for someone to work on your car, just make sure they've got the right kit. Other than that, I like them. That black Superleggera I've got out there, you drive it and it's, it's just an adventure every time you drive it. You sit in the car, your, seat are, your feet are offset. The gear change, because it's an e-gear, is brutal. But that's part of the fun. If I wanted a Formula One car, I'd go and buy a Huracan. You can take it on track. It's seamlessly smooth. Seamlessly smooth. We strap turbos on the back of them and they do over 1,200 horsepower. And you can do that. But I think the old stuff, especially manuals now that are going to go back up in value, I think we've kind of lost that supercar feel. Um, that adventure when you drive it. They are hard to drive. You know, I've driven a Countach. I thought it was awful. But brilliant, you, you know, you can't see out of it. Aventador, you can't see out of them. It's an adventure every time you drive it. They're intimidating, they're scary, they're noisy. You never really feel like you're in full control like you do in the later supercars. Um, so I like them. Five litre engine, nothing sounds the same. You get them on a set of straight pipes and you open them up. I think they sound brutal. Um, we run the blue one on the dyno. I'm going to run the black Superleggera later today. And the noise they make when they're on is just unreal so i like them i think you'll enjoy it it's got aldis done a good job on the engine um and as long as they're looked after they're not they're not bad they're not bad cars they just it's just getting finicky to find bits we're chatting about lower arms and stuff like that but honestly it's no different in r8s you buy a 07 08 09 r8 v8 you can't get lower arms or top arms from them anymore because they dropped them and modified everything across to the V10 system. Why should we make two different arms for a V8 and a V10? So they did that. Now you've got problems with cars are failing MOTs on lower ball joints or upper ball joints on v early V8s. You've got to change everything. Top arms, bottom arms, hub carriers, rear toe arms, spend six grand. So it's not much, you know, people sort of go, oh yeah, but they're expensive to run. I, I don't think they are. There's little caveats like the pistons, but if you know the way around it, then they're not too bad. They're not. They're a supercar at the end of the day, and they come with bills. It's just certain things you can only get from Lamborghini, and that's where it can get expensive. But so yeah, I can't wait to see yours out on the road, really, and see uh, see how it goes. You have to bring it down and put it on a dyno. So everyone, thank you for watching today's video. Really appreciate you stopping by. A huge shout out to Ricky. If you have either an R8 or a Gardo, he's certainly one of the people you might want to speak to, especially if you want it to go a heck of a lot faster. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.